In this video, we're gonna take this awesome 400 gigabyte Raspberry Pi 3B Plus image and overclock it and show the performance differences. We're gonna check out some PSP, some Dreamcast, and some Nintendo 64. The reason being is those tend to struggle the most on the Raspberry Pi. So we'll do some gameplay, and you can compare this gameplay to my last video I made a couple days ago, um, but you'll be able to see some noticeable differences here. Now this image has an overclock script um, already on it, and as you see here, I will be going from the stock 1.4 gigahertz to 1.5. I did go up to 1.55, and honestly, I had some stability issues, so I can't recommend that. But at the 1.5, I spent about an hour gaming, and I had no issues whatsoever. My Pi was in a really nice case, um, and has nice active cooling, um, but still, nonetheless, if you just have a decent fan or a decent case, you should be able to get away with 1.5, and the differences are noticeable, and um, before making this video, I've overclocked my Pis for years and never had an issue, so um, let's go ahead and check out the performance, and uh, you could be the judge yourself. The other thing with overclocking is not all Pis are created equal. Some we're going to do better than others so i was just showing you here that i am now at the 1.5 and like i said this is a good point um to a lot of people's credit on the forums you're already the pi 3b plus is already pushing a lot for that little chipset so you know from going from 1.2 to 1.4 and now 1.4 to 1.5 you know it's it's pretty demanding so but um if you really want 1.55 or potentially even 1.6, you can go for it. I I would I wouldn't do that myself, but it's you know I know a lot of you like to mess around. So um, what I would do is just get a <clears throat> a better single board computer myself, um, especially when you think about the investment for the cooling. So uh, let's start this off with Doom 64. I played this game a couple days ago in my previous video. I'll put a link to that video in case you want to see it. And uh, to uh, V Man's credit, I need to up the up the brightness a lot on this game but uh, I just want to show you the menu system here and how it's running and um, I'm actually gonna I, I started a new game and I totally messed up where I was going and so um, I'll start the game off with me just starting the game to show you that how the menu lag is but then I'm gonna actually go it's gonna fast forward to my second round uh, in the game so while the game's playing I'm just gonna do a little let you uh, a little commentary on the specs and you can see the game as well this is a pretty typical time to get into the game okay now fast forwarded just grab the blue key and um, it's just I'm just bad at controller I'm a keyboard and a mouse type of person here but you'll notice here in a moment we're gonna have um, some a lot of elements on the screen once we open this door Make sure I armor up because I died here last time. And I'd say overall a pretty, um, pretty actually similar. I, I don't know if I'd give Doom a night and day score, but it's running really well, especially for the Raspberry Pi. Nintendo 64 is notorious for being a little harder to emulate. So there you go pretty good so now let's pick a game that definitely lags a lot more we're gonna go ahead and jump into some Super Smash Brothers and uh, classic game a lot of people love this game something about this image that's cool it has all those launch screens and the bezels here and so just showing you the menu system it tends to lag you kind of hear the sound lag a little bit So I was really bad at this level as I was figuring out my controls on my Xbox 360 controller. Um, so it's going to fast forward to the Yoshi level in just a second. For those of you that aren't aware, the Yoshi level has a lot more things going on on the screen. So it definitely tests the Raspberry Pi out a lot more. So here you go. Here is the uh, Yoshi level.
So as you're watching, um, you know, it's running really, like this is totally playable. I would play this um, with no hesitate. Like I'm not gonna be a snob about it. Um, in the past, people on my channel have said, you call this playable? Um, this is totally um, playable. So, and as you see, I'm, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video as well, I've been playing these games for a while. You know, I'm not just turning on my pie, and playing the first level. Definitely going back to back games, no break in between, and um, the pie is working just fine. Uh, when you get into the 1.5, 1.6, I would, uh, that was just my fault. <laughs> Sometimes I like losing better, mixed for more fun. So um, here's 1080. And you can see kind of this, the, the sound lag, and especially when you go in between cutscenes. But once you get rocking and rolling, I mean, this game is just fine. Again, not very good at the game. I always loved the game. It was really cool when it first came out. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, I totally play this game, no problem. Um, this game wasn't unplayable before the overclock, but um, I'm sure if you get to certain levels with more things on the screen, um, it could be. I was just messing around. I was trying to get him to do crazy stuff. So just hitting the controller, in case you're wondering, I'm not that bad. Okay, um, so, and then a little bit of tearing here and it's just, you know, but that's that's pretty standard on a lot of those, on a lot of emulators for Nintendo 64. Now here we go, PSP. I'm at 4x right now. I upped it all the way to 4x, and it's almost unplayable, but it looks gorgeous. And mind you, you know, a lot of single board computers would struggle here. So um, I also don't know this map, just FYI. I've never played it before. So um, here I go back into game settings, and you can see I'm always at 4x rendering. So let's go to 3x here, which isn't going to tax it as much. And here we go. And as you see, um, much better. Still some lag there, though. It still looks amazing, comparatively. Um, and there we go. I'll probably die again here. And then after this round, I think I lost. Yeah, so this is where I go to 2x, which is actually, if you're using this image, uh, by the way, this is the V-Man 400 gigabyte image for the Raspberry Pi 3B and B+. Plus. Uh, I recommend it on the B+, plus just because you have better performance um, and it's the same price for the board um, so as I was saying it, it it's stock on uh, you don't have to mess with them in those settings within the emulator within PPSP um, and so on this it runs just fine I'm just suck I don't know this map plus it's kind of unfair right that the computer the computer know like it's just following the AI it knows where to go so not as fair it's like it's like racing against a Tesla and you have your GPS on and you've never been there before. The autopilot has a pretty big advantage. Okay, so um, fun game. The whole Micro Machine franchise is pretty freaking amazing. But as you see, 2X, not easy. And a lot of great PSP games to play on the Raspberry Pi. So I uh, this is the last game. We'll play some Soul Calibur on Dreamcast. A lot of Dreamcast games run good stock clock, but overclocking, you will see a performance boost. Those are the main three systems, by the way, and some arcade games that are a little heavier. Um, Sega Saturn, you know, some of the games are playable, um, and then that's really where you're getting into the, into the you know, compatibility. You can't go up to uh, GameCube. I'm sorry. Um, now, I will post a file here or in the description which will give you some different overclock settings you can try on your own it's really easy I'm to just good. go back to your stock okay. clock you just put your sd card in open up your config file and copy and paste the different settings this particular image has a script on it so it's fairly easy to do with click a button i think that's really cool um, i do have another video coming up where i'll be testing out some raspberry pi 4 images and i'll be overclocking that because <clears throat> now we could probably really crank up those settings and uh, play Sega Saturn and, and a lot more of the catalog of Dreamcast and Nintendo 64. So I'm really excited about that. So um, in conclusion, you know, it could be worthwhile. You should definitely check it out. Always, you know, at your own risk. You know, I would say the risk is kind of low here compared to like a desktop computer as far as overheating and ruining of one of those processors. And so it's really fun to experiment with this and you do see a performance increase. 
Um, as far as uh, RAM and like the, your experience within emulation station, uh, you're not going to notice a huge difference overclocking because that's really a, a RAM limitation, which um, you'll need like a Raspberry Pi 4 or something like that. But a um, lot of fun. It was worthwhile. Let me know what you all think. Let me know if there's any games you want me to test. God of War will not run great on this. But um, anyways, don't forget to like, subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next one.